Everybody, a uh, quick introduction from producer David here. Um, we have some very sad news to report. Um, as some of you may have heard already, um, we lost a fellow podcaster this past week, uh, Johnny Krug of Kruger Nation and Short Bus Cinema, uh, part of the Legion family, um, passed uh, this past week. And I, this has been a shock to me as well as I'm sure to most everyone else within our community as well as you know people who knew him as you know listeners or fans and not to mention his family who I can't imagine what they're going through right now um but I just wanted to say that I I don't I don't really know what I have to say honestly I, I'm kind of at a loss for words here um this is hit me kind of harder than I expected it would um but I wanted to say thank you to Johnny for what he did. And uh, we here at the, uh, excuse me, the uh, VD Click would like to uh, we here at the VD Clinic would like to dedicate this episode to Johnny. Enjoy the show. And welcome to the VD Clinic. Hello, I'm Vanessa. Happy Pride, everyone. And with me, as always, dun da 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 Ally Darren. Happy Pride Month, uh, <laughs> Vanessa. Thank you. Yes. And, you know, our Pride selections around this place are... Quite a, a wide variety <laughs> of I'm... interpretations of pride and movies that somehow have a following within the you know queer and trans communities. Um, uh, even if sometimes they aren't what you would typically think of, but so this year. <laughs> We did Tom of Finland last year, right? Yeah, we we went highbrow last year, actually. I, <laughs> oh, I saw Florence Tom of Finland still... socks advertised on uh, oh, I Facebook know. the other day. I know. I did, too. I was half tempted to get some. <laughs> I was tempted, too, but then it looked like it said 1% of the proceeds go to the Tom of Finland Foundation or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's... Like, oh, uh, that's low. And I'm sure you could get them so that it's more than, yeah. <laughs> yeah, leather socks. Oh, those, would, that would suck. I, well, unless that's your thing. Um, well, <laughs> Torch Song Trilogy, right? The year before. Yes, Torch Song Trilogy. Um, and then we did uh, Whatever um, Happened to Baby Jane. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which, again... Not a typical pride thing, but it's it's a camp, you know, queer kind of classic. Um, I mean, Jim Crawford, Betty Davis. Um, yeah. So this year we kind of are going back a little campy, but there's still um, it's still quite queer and and, and quite uh, gender bending. Non-binary before that was such a mainstream conversation, but we will get to that. We are watching. Without further ado, we watched, I should say, the um, 1999 movie *Bride of Chucky*. Is it 99? 98. I think sorry, it's 98. 98. *Bride of Chucky* and the 2004 sequel. 
Speaking of Chucky, <laughs> yes, I know there are opinions about that one in the horror community. But yeah, there's I I don't know about you, but I have a lot to say. I told you I took a lot of notes, but <laughs> awesome. Not saying I was I was particularly sober when I was taking notes. Um, <laughs> do you do handwritten handwritten notes or jot things in your phone? Oh, I just script them down on a piece of paper that's right it's like how certain psychic mediums do automatic writing when the spirits guide them this is kind of the same thing and that's why i take so many pages of notes it's really not a lot of content but because my handwriting is so big in that space and so sloppy because i'm writing so fast <laughs> it takes up so much space yeah i think yeah it looks like a serial killer I think I can or visualize doctor. it from a movie or two. Oh, go watch. Um, oh, what is it on a uh, travel channel or discovery plus it's called. It's a psychic medium paired with a retired New York cop. Um, <laughs> it's dead something. Yeah. I don't know. It's not, you know, it's interesting. It's one of those that it's just kind of worth a laugh. Oh, no, that one doesn't. I take that back. That one doesn't do the automatic writing. That's the one that does the. I've been watching a lot of Discovery Plus. <laughs> <Sounds good. laughs> I'm revealing a lot about myself right now. This is my, yeah, my little thing that I've been watching a lot lately. I, the Holzer Files. There is a psychic medium on there. I'm not saying these people are completely legit, okay? But I do believe that some people do have that gift, okay? I have met people who do. Okay. However, they're not you they're not the ones that are rich and famous. <laughs> <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> it doesn't that doesn't work that way usually. Um so anyway, but there's one on here on this the show and who does the automatic writing. And and just goes on and yeah, whenever she's in a space, they're asking questions of the spirits. It's yeah. So that's my that's my note writing kind of when I watch movies. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I figure I don't know. I go back and forth on the note taking thing. Mm -hmm. Sort of depends on what kind of conversation it's going to be, and I know writing well, notes is a way of retention. Even if you don't use them, but I almost never use my notes. Mm -hmm. So that's true. I mean, it, and truly, I when I take more like legit longer notes is if it's something with a documentary. But it, again, even like I was leading this discussion earlier this week where we were talking about two documentaries. I mean, granted, one of which I had already seen, but. The other, I mean, you know, I knew, I didn't take any notes for them. I knew off the top of my head, like, pretty much, like, most of the names, you know, that I could remember and that kind of thing. It, you know, it was much more about the story and the topics being discussed and what came out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, <laughs> like, as as an example, well, I, I guess I'll talk talk about it. When we get to it uh, in the first discussion, but I'll give a mm -hmm. basic example of the type of notes I do now if I do notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, okay. everybody's got their own own way. Uh, but like you said, well, uh, you introduced both the movies. I imagine we're going to talk about each one on their own. We're not necessarily doing a... I mean, it's it's linear. There's there are not a lot of flashbacks yet in these movies, right? Right. It's. I mean. I mean. It, it, yeah. So. Yeah. I. I mean. We'll. We're gonna just. We'll start out with um, Bride of Chucky, but um, before we do, we'll take a brief break, and um, so I can get more water. <laughs> I'm sorry, Darren. <laughs> And yes, and when we come back, we will discuss Bride of Chucky. Okay, be back. 
Fay Ray. <coughs> Janet Lee. <coughs> Adrian King. <coughs> Heather Langenkamp. <coughs> Amy Steele. <coughs> that weatherman who saw the cockroach. That oh my god! Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> and you. Come on. You know you wanna. Let her rip. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! There. Now don't you feel better. You are now officially a Scream Queen. Come play with the rest of us at www.screamqueens.com. That's Queens with a Z. Or you could subscribe to us on iTunes. Either way, it's going to be fucking fabulous. The Scream Queens Horror Podcast. It's where horror gets bent. And we are back. Okay. (laughs) Well, Darren, do you want to go down the cast or do you want me to? No, I, I can. That's fine. Uh, okay. The Bride of Chucky, starring in. Uh, I even got a couple of the puppeteers' names here, if we should choose to do it. But anyway, the live people in the film. We've got Jennifer Tilly as Tiffany Valentine, Brad Dourif as Chucky's voice, and. I, uh, Catherine Heigl, which I totally forgot, as Jade Kincaid. Nick Stable as Jesse Miller. Of course, there is John Ritter. I totally forgot he was in this. As, How could I fucking uh, forget? That was one of the few things that I remembered was John Ritter and, uh, like pre transition Alexis Arquette. Yeah, yeah. No. No, I, but I, I just, we, I was just always like fucking Catherine Heigl is in this. I really don't. <laughs> like okay, I just, uh, we, we'll get into that. I just we'll don't like her. In, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, that's the one thing that sticks in my mind. That's why I forgot about John Ritter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As chief, unfortunate. Chief Warren Kincaid, as I mentioned, Alexis Arquette as Damian Baylock and Howard Fitzwater. And then, uh, I mean, what? Kathy Najimini? Kathy Najimini is, is the maid, the hotel maid. It's I, Naj- okay, I, I always it. say Najimini for some reason. I love that she pops up. I love it. <laughs> I mean, also, also starring this late 90s soundtrack. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A billion Rob Zombie songs. <laughs> Well, it was really too featured, but I think there was some like score work done. It was it seems like it. It seemed like it. But there was also some like um what was it? What's his brother's band? Power Man 5000. Yeah, yeah. His song, one of his one of their songs was on there too. Um I mean, there was plenty of other, <laughs> you know, right, it was yeah. that time. It was that time. <laughs> Typo day. You know, but I was digging it. I was digging it. I was right there with Chucky, you know. <laughs> Music's Head gone banging. to crap since I died. Or whatever the fuck he says. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> so, yes. And, and then, okay. So, part of why I picked this I'll tell you right out the gate of why I picked this and, and seed of Chucky is because the creator and in this case, also he's an executive producer and writer on it. Don Mancini is, is gay. And so, you know, you can see, and this was by the time this movie came out, he had already come out publicly because I don't think he was, he wasn't really out when, you know, the original movie was released. Okay. 
So, you know, and, and and then you can see in this movie, this is also, he was more involved in this than I think. Well, I definitely, I don't think he was involved as involved in Child's Play 3. And he was kind of involved in Child's Play 2. But it doesn't seem to be as much, yeah. you know. Um, but... This at this point he was much more involved, and so there's so many things in here that I'm like queer, queer, <laughs> queer, trans. Like I mean, gender bending. Like I mean, yeah. It you know it was just like it was. I mean, from the fact that you have Jennifer Tilly, who is like like lesbian icon. <laughs> since bound <laughs> you know plus she's also been in a number of movies where she's you know that have been where she's been that have been a very you know queer and trans friendly and you know where she's played the ally you know the ally to what, what is that movie where it's largely a group of gay men, but at any, but anyway, a gay man and their friends, but about that end up being, uh, HIV positive. And it's called, is it called? It's my party. Maybe. I don't know. Um, it's been ages uh, since I've seen that. Movie? It was, uh, I want to say nineties, hmm. maybe early nineties. Anyway, um, but um, <laughs> I, never I, mind. I, okay. But anyway, no. But it, she's been in these different things, and she's been very vocal about her support of you know the LGBTQ plus community for a very long time, you know. And so, so it was kind of like, well, yeah, okay, you put her in there in this, you know, this role, and then you have. Just something like, okay, Alexi Arquette there, you know, yes, pre-transition, but at that time was living as a, you know, queer man. So, and that was something that, you know, and obviously, even if Alexi weren't, weren't trans, there would be gender bending, perhaps, you know. Yeah, you can still, you know, and and so there, just to have that, and to also, the, it's just you had these. I don't know. You had the little things in there that I saw along the way that it was kind of like, okay, you just put that in there, put that in there, and I picked. Uh, there was just more that I saw this time that it was like little knots, you know. Yeah, and there, uh, there's Jade's friend. Well, of course, Jade has her gay gay boy best friend. Is that David or is that the boyfriend's name? Jesse and Jade it, and David is the friend with the the David. highlights who's And the earring. The earring figure skater. And his, uh, that was the thing. Yeah. <laughs> going to and, theater. And going into theater. <laughs> Knows all about right. taking care of flowers. Like yeah. Right. <laughs> Not well, into guys in uniform anymore. Not I, necessarily. I know. <laughs> I, I know. I love that. I mean, I love that. It was like lines like that that were sprinkled in that I was just like, this is too perfect. <laughs> this is too perfect. And then even the fact that, I mean, yes, we've seen so many times throughout horror movies over the years, whether it be a Halloween or whatever where there are characters and they're watching another horror movie mm -hmm. like and in this case where the you know Jennifer Tilly isn't you know Tiffany's in the bathtub and she's watching Bride of Frankenstein directed by James Whale you know who was gay so it's kind of like you could have easily chosen another classic, you know, horror movie, mm. but it, it wasn't just, 
it, it, and but if you look at the themes in Bride of Frankenstein and even Frankenstein, but particularly Bride of Frankenstein, there are a lot of things in there that speak the language of someone who is a closeted queer. And, you know, and so it's kind of interesting that that's there. But to choose that, that, okay, you're going to choose that as the movie too, you know, that she's watching. Like, in a, it's in, a, in just an additional way. Right. Like, like reinforce the dialogue. And it also lays, the, again, it lays the groundwork for Seed of Chucky. His directorial debut. Right. Uh, and like you said, his expanding influence on the franchise. Uh, Bride of Chucky is the first one where he did more than one of the three director, writer, producer. So mm-hmm. he was writer, producer on this, and then director and writer on Seed of Chucky, director, writer on Curse, director, writer, and producer on mm-hmm. Cult of Chucky. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. And 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 truly, I mean, it, out of the entire I like the the Child's Play franchise a lot. But truly when you look at the entire franchise, the ones I could do without are parts 2 and 3. I mean, 3 is easily my least favorite. <laughs> easily. <laughs> and 2 yeah. and 2 is my next to least favorite. I'm not saying it's horrible, but I'm just kind of like Oh, okay, but it, it's just, I, I just, I don't know, I don't, I don't, it, I, it do, I don't know, it's, it, it doesn't feel, it, it flows as well as it could. <laughs> Whatever. It's I been a while since I've seen it, but. I've seen two uh, way more recently than three, because I feel like three, if I'm going to skip one, that's mm-hmm. the one I skip. Yeah. I saw the first one obviously well not obviously but the most but yeah i thought about going back and watching three leading into this but then i didn't want to (laughs) yeah (laughs) and i i do have uh i am a fan of the cult and curse oh i no i i like those a lot too even though the tone is you know obviously decidedly different than Bride and Seed because Bride and Seed are are distinct horror comedies. Very much. I mean Or they've... comedy horrors. Yeah. However I... you want to look at it. Yeah, is it because Chucky Chucky always had his quips. Yeah. But... Kind of like Freddy. Yeah. Especially after the first one. I mean it was just kind of yeah, I think he, uh, the second and third is more when he started being like Freddy in the later ones, saying more jokey things. But I feel like Freddy, even by the second one, started, you know, with that, you know, You've a bit got, more too. Yeah. You've got the beauty. I've got the brain. Yeah. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, those are, you know, got, you know, but these, and actually, I have a book. And that I will, when I, in, you know, post this episode, I will write the, I will include the name of in there um, in case anyone's interested. And I'll also uh, post it on the Facebook page. But it's a book called The View From Here. And it's interviews with gay and lesbian filmmakers and Don Mancini does one in here. And I mean, it's a short, you know, 10 page interview, but he himself says, you know, I, I love the Chucky character and everything, but he's like, and the, and it was, this was written at the time after, I guess maybe, was it after curse, but not be, but before cult, maybe is when they wrote it um, around that time. Okay. So, so anyway, but he's talking about it and, you know, like all the films and like looking at them in retrospect and he's like, I just feel like two and three don't fit with the rest of the franchise completely. 
He said, I just feel like something is off about them. You know, and of course, if he has more, con you know, artistic control at different points, that's going to make a difference. And he, he sees this as very personal. Um, more than just, I think, an average, you know, writer. I mean, because it, it seems like he feels there's a definite, like, a true personal story that's being told at certain points. And I know we've said this at other points, I believe when, um, when I know, uh, like when we covered, what was it? The Gilded stories where you oftentimes, if you're a member of the LGBTQ plus community, you feel like the other, you feel like the monster. And so when you create, you know, or you see something that, or read something that is a horror story or, you know, like that, you identify with the monster because you've been othered. So I, you know, I just, it, and I'll get more into it when we're talking about Seed of Chucky. Because I feel like there's certain bits of that script that seem very personal to Don Mancini. Okay. And yeah. when you look at it, the surface, it just kind of seems like, okay, these are whatever, not quite throw a light, throwaway lines. But, you know, okay, you just, you know, you don't go so far. But then you really, it's kind of like, no, wait. It's like saying, wait, I'll get to that. I'm getting my head of myself. But, um, I, I, yeah, I definitely think that's, that makes a difference. And, you know, and again, I, you know, this, I, I think when horror fan, when it came out, horror fan, horror fans kind of, I feel gave it a mixed reaction. What? Bride? Bride of Chucky. Yeah. I, you hear a lot more. Because. Go ahead. People enjoyed it. Like a fair amount of people enjoyed it, but there were still the fans who, you know, child's play fans who wanted something that wasn't as comedic. Yeah. Yeah. To uh, Bride and Seed both, I feel like has a lot of people in the horror fandom split on opinion. Right. Because, I mean, there's still gory i mean see <laughs> seeds a lot more gory than this but oh no the kills actually i mean like the kills are really good i mean actually like in this one i mean like there's certain ones where i'm like that's really a good kill you know <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> like i love the okay i love the the homage to pinhead with the nails in the head as the, the way that they start to kill John Ritter's character. And I thought, and I thought that was nice, not just because it was a nod to another horror movie, but again, it was a nod to another queer horror creator. Um, oh, of course. Yeah. And there were all those other nods to horror movies in the beginning when there's oh, going, oh, yeah. going through the evidence locker. Well, but that also is, it also lays the groundwork for Seed and how meta that film is, mm -hmm. which, yeah. It, what, I mean, came but it. 96? Was it? Was it 95, 96? Yeah. So I think that helped movie take this kind of flavor from the. Oh, is three the military school one? Yes. Is that where Andy's older and he is he played by the kid from i don't think don't so the babysitter's dead I oh i don't know. remember um or kenny yeah i think that's anyway yeah three three is the one that i have only seen maybe two or three times ever um uh, anyway. yeah i haven't yeah. seen it that often because i'm just like not impressed really you know yeah and I mean, any sorry, I derailed you. Where we were talking about the beginning of Bride of Chucky, where we were at the first kill. Yeah, well, 
I just, but it, it just, it, like I said, it lays the, I mean, you have, well, we were saying, you know, it lays this groundwork for the, the meta atmosphere of seed, but which obviously this movie was written with that in mind. I mean, we knew, you know, why else would it end with, why else would it include, I mean, like all these different things you are actually speaking of which, it seems to me I had to stop it, like it, like pause the movie. But I think, speaking of foreshadowing, at the opening of this movie, when they're going through, you know, the raw zombie music's playing, Living Dead Girl's playing, and they're going through uh, Tiffany's trailer and you see all these dolls around her place, I think there is one that looks kind of like Glen Glenda oh. with that kind of reddish hair. It's kind of unclear and I'm not saying it's a hundred percent correct, but it could be okay. it. It looks like it would be a good basis that I could see them saying, okay, well, how do we use that and as an inspiration and then just make it more enhanced and scary? You know what I mean? I could see that, but... Um, well, and the baby definitely had pointed teeth. <laughs> right. But I'm saying this doll that's sitting on the shelf in, um, it, that, in that opening of Bride of Chucky, I was just like, is that... Wait, what? Because, you know, I... <laughs> You were ready. Yeah, you know, it, it was all just the connections. But I, you know, we 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 talk about the the music like this late '90s thing. It's kind of like where she has the voodoo for dummies book, and I'm like the for dummies books. Like every it, that was like such the rage that all of those had just come out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm not saying they're all such a bad thing, but it was kind of hysterical the way that they were, you know released <laughs> right and now every you'd go into a bookstore and there was like an entire just four dummies section <laughs> it was kind of comical yeah but um oh what was i gonna say You're talking about oh, the music yeah if that helps no i was gonna so i no i was going on i was i was gonna skip ahead oh. um so after whatever they're on the run and everything and they get to whatever that uh, hotel room the niagara falls honeymoon suites or whatever they're called the, yeah exactly and um and they have the doll sex scene <laughs> after a really cool mirror kill yeah that was actually a, a pretty awesome kill um th okay so and i was like as f it, I have to say, it it was funny the doll sex scene, like it was funny, but I was kind of glad it wasn't as ridiculous as the puppet sex or marionette sex scene in Team America. <laughs> <laughs> Only a woman, uh, yeah. I was like, thank goodness. I mean, and it it embraced it the comedic value of it without going over into being okay. This is just being kind of stupid. <laughs> well, I wonder if it was because I had seen, I think it was Jennifer Tilly said that the puppeteers improved the sex scene. Yeah. So I wonder yeah. if that's, you know, people that have been working that closely together for that long, just, <laughs> just trying it out. They might have already, you know, I don't know. They, you know, they might have been on set and just started screwing around while, like, the cameras weren't rolling. And someone saw him, the director saw and was like, oh, no, 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 hold on. We're going to film that. That's We're in the movie that. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be so great. <laughs> it definitely see. I mean, this was this is one of those movies that it seemed like the core people probably were having a ton of fun. Don't know about everybody, but I feel oh, like absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I no, I feel like there were you could tell that there were certain people 
that were having fun while they were making it. Yeah. Uh, Brad Dourif said at least once that this is his favorite one. I know. And I love, I, I have always loved Brad Dourif. Oh yeah. He's wonderful. Like no matter what he is in, he just consistently like one flew over the cuckoo's nest or, um, you know, exorcist three, like Deadwood. Yeah. I mean, um, just so many things. Oh, yeah. The Lord of the Rings movies with the the voice of his future son, daughter. Oh. Billy Boyd, who does the voice of Glenn Glenda, is Pippin in the uh-huh. Lord of the Rings movies. So they I actually... I did not realize that. Oh, yeah. They shared a on-screen live scene in, uh, I think it's Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Because okay, uh, have you? I don't know if you ever watched those movies, but Dorif plays, or he, I, I've seen them once. <laughs> oh, okay, he plays and, that. And it's weird. Guy. Be, yeah, it's weird because I I used my dad used to read me those, and I read the books, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of times when I was a kid. But it, I just didn't get into those movies, yeah. other than the animated Hobbit movie as a kid. Oh, Amanda's got the extended cuts. Wait, she went and saw them all in the theater. She knows more oh, about this goodness. stuff than I do, and I'm, you know, named after one of the characters. <laughs> and I was gonna say, Darren, you're 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 slacking on your Tolkien. At least I don't hate on it like some people might have turned to. But yeah, Amanda's like I just yeah. love the clerks. <laughs> <laughs> the clerks too rant about. <laughs> <laughs> sorry no no oh. note. i don't hate lord of the rings or anything like that but sometimes when people get so passionate about it you almost want to say that to them just to get them to chill out for a minute <laughs> yeah. anyway no they're they're good but anyway right i just i'm not like i don't get fangirl about them that's all you know, I really like Brad Dourif in Mississippi Burning. Yeah. He plays a real shitty cop. Well, a real good shitty cop, I mean to say. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, we could go on and, and on Wasn't about... he also a cop in Rob Zombie's Halloween? Was he? Probably. Or I'm Rob sure Zombie or Halloween or Halloween 2 for Rob Zombie? Yeah, he was I sheriff. think both, though. He was the sheriff. Yeah, I uh, thought so. Bracket, bracket, bracket. Sheriff Brad. Yeah, he was the sheriff in both of those movies. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Brad Dorf's awesome. Fiona seems like she's on her way to doing some cool stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen her in anything besides uh, Cult and Curse. Yeah. But, I mean, I think that, I mean, it, I'm like, I think I, she just seems like she has a, a you know, definite potential. But, so, um, so sorry. Derailed. The derailed train of the bride of chucky the sex scene uh have you got a rubber i'm all rubber i thought you were plastic (laughs) (laughs) i I mean that's that is that is a poor that is an insult i'm sorry unintentional to jennifer tilly i can't do her voice um chucky either so i'm gonna try to stop yeah but yeah (laughs) <laughs> it's just there there's just too many like good i mean there this definitely ha- brings up the humor edge but um six no match for a good hunk of wood a lot a lot of good jokes from Jen- or puns from or like dull jokes from jennifer tilly jennifer tilly exactly well, and even, well, the entire movie, it, the entire language, she's always like doll face, like when, or she, or she calls Jesse sweet face. Yeah. You know, or whatever. But she calls, you know, but then when she's talking to Chucky, you know, she calls him sweet, she calls him doll face. Mm-hmm. Like, it just though, like it's a regular kind of term of endearment. That you might hear someone say? Yes. And she's very, yeah. Uh, and she even ramps it up as they all kind of do in the next one. But 
Oh, uh, well, of course. And that's just it is. And, but, and that's, and that's what I was going to say is that the next movie though, takes the humor up even more, but it's still, and we're going to, I think we're going to, do we want to, let's get, we're going to wrap, getting close to wrapping this up discussion yeah. first. And then I think we'll take a short break and then move on to see to Chucky. Cool. Because I kind of feel like we're moving that way. I mean, because these do very much move into each other and set up with each other. I watched them both back to back both times that I watched for this. Yeah. 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 I just popped them on at night, you know, paid paid a lot of attention the first time. Second time it was kind of in the background, but yeah, still had to just let them go. I mean, together they're shorter than one extended cut Lord of the Rings movie. (laughs) Yeah, I know. But anyway, actually, probably shorter than one regular length Lord of the Rings movie. Possibly, because these are both about an hour and a half. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. Think about that. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) The first Lord of the Rings movie was, I don't know why we're sorry, David. (laughs) 178 minutes. Yeah. Fellowship of the Ring is one. That's almost three hours. So, yeah. So, two different kinds of night. You could probably do the same drugs and watch them, though. Yeah, (laughs) there you are. But uh, so anyway, we're getting towards the end of the movie, and they go to the graveyard in New Jersey. Um. (laughs) Yep, got to go to Hackensack or wherever he said. Which the funny thing is, they're they're going on that whatever. Then whatever as they're driving, I think they're playing. Rob Zombie is playing again at that point. Probably. <laughs> but Com- I up. saw Rob Zombie in concert in Jersey, in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh well, and I wasn't Hackensack though. <laughs> But I think last time I technically I saw think. Rob Zombie was trying to not see Rob Zombie because it was it was a riot fest when a new uh, layout for the stages was happening. There was a yeah. lot of sound bleed over in a bad way. So Ooh. I feel like Rob Zombie was still playing when Slater Kenny was playing Ooh, and it was that's a shame it was a shame but it didn't overlap for too long and it was near the end of the night so after that it was i mean yeah. that's a disservice to both bands <laughs> like right yeah and they were on different areas of the park but there was yeah. just something with the air that night and it was like no oh, yeah i don't want to hear do 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 you know when yeah sleater kenny's doing something very much not like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got it. No, I get it. No, and and well, and when I went and, and saw them, it was like they it was a double bill with Rob Zombie and Corn. And I went with a friend who wanted to see Corn and I was more <laughs> interested in seeing Rob Zombie. Although I mean I've seen Corn you know too before. You know, I, I like I like them well enough, but you know, this is someone who's like a major corn fanatic. Um, and the vast majority of these crazy people in New Jersey were there to see corn. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, really? <laughs> I would have thought Rob Zombie. I don't put that, whatever it's Jersey, maybe. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, I don't weird. know. I, I never. I didn't figure out how they figured out who was the bigger bill there. I mean, because yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we have we have uh, gone another diversions, but I was going to say they go to their their graveyard in New Jersey, and I love how fake that graveyard looks. <laughs> it is Ed Wood Plan Nine level fake graveyard. Right. Fright night. Holliston almost, but not quite. Right. It's I I'm like, I love it. It looks 
it doesn't look quite like a styrofoam, to, you know, styrofoam tombstone, you know, like headstone. But it it almost does. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's and probably it, the direct the decorations from the prop guys Halloween extra effort, but well, but it wouldn't surprise me if they were trying to do that on purpose. No, not with all the references to Bride of Frankenstein and stuff. She has a framed picture of the bride that falls into I the know. bathtub with her. I know. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's pretty... If it's not done on purpose, I would be so so surprised, basically. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, they had a big enough budget, I, th- I would say. But... Yeah, um, got Catherine Heidel and- on the way up. God. <laughs> she, you said you wanted to say okay. something, so we might as well do it before we get into Seed of Chucky. I had tried to forget that she was in this, but I can't. She's just, she's one of those actresses that grates on my nerves. And then when you hear about how difficult she is, as far as being on set with her, and then just people, like, people deal with, dealing with her in public. I'm like, it doesn't make me, it doesn't make me want to like her anymore. Um, but I just, it makes this character of Jay. I have, I'm like, I, I just, I, I want to go. I don't want you to live. I don't care. <laughs> you want Jesse and Tiffany to run away together or just her to die. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, it's just, like, find a different, go, yeah, you should have just, you should just, you're you're better off waiting, it's better off how it turned out, so you could go to Hollywood, well, we'll get, you're better off waiting at, like, and how it turned out at the end of this movie, you know, Tiffany, it turned out for the best, it turned out in your favor, that, yes. So on that note, because I would, I'm, I, I'm just glad that we we don't end up with Catherine Heigl again. <laughs> Speed of Chucky. I just couldn't have done it. You said all those things. I want to say I I don't have anything for Catherine Heigl, but I don't really have anything against her. But I did hear those things. But I also am not quick to say that a woman's difficult. Because I don't know. Um, well, but this was something, this is, it seems like this, if you can't get along with Seth Rogen, then there might be something cause he seems pretty chill, but I don't know. It's not, it's not like, but this is like some, uh, like females are saying this too, where it's just like, she's not just like a basic, like she's not just like basic, friendly, polite, uh, like. You know, kind of shitty um, manners. Shitty manners go like, a long way. Just really, and just treats everyone like treats people rudely. That's no good. Yeah, like that kind of thing. All just right. an overall thing. And, the VD yeah. Clinic is officially against Catherine Heigl. I I support you. So I mean, it it, I ha- it hasn't all been from like male, you know, employers or coworkers. It's you know, it's female as well. It seems general, the, the general consensus. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, yeah, the, I don't Ooh, want the to cops imagine. joining us. Hey, they're busting up the people for the Juneteenth fireworks. Maybe. Although those seem to, have, I don't know, died down a little bit, but anyway, so the one last thing I did want to say about, the movie is that that final fight that showdown between Chucky and Tiffany, it holds up. I think effects wise, don't you think? Yeah. Like that, this was 1998. Okay. And it's still, I'm not, you know, it's, it's shot in, in a, in a, in a way that, the entire fight between the two of them works and is believable. And I think it, that comes from the fact that the director, Ronnie, Yu, 
was directing martial arts movies. That's true. You know, before this. So I think that makes a big difference. And maybe that's how they could work with the effects and make the, and I, because honestly, I, this was the first time I had pulled out my nice new, you know, my nice fancy Blu-ray of it. My first time I watched on, you know, the 4K, whatever. And it's just all, okay, I hadn't seen it <clears throat> probably in HD even. And then I'm just like, it looks nice and clear. It doesn't look like dated special effects because you look at so many other ones, so many other things from this same time period or even a little later that just don't hold up. So I, you know, I had to give props there. <laughs> well, and uh, the thing you were talking about with the fight scene and the director the, you probably also noticed that the cinematographer is the cinematographer from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, I didn't realize it. Well, that makes a difference, too. Uh, Peter Powell? Peter Poe? P-A-U? I remember that that one. I remembered that more than I remembered oh. Ronnie Yu. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's a... That makes sense, too. Yeah. That makes absolute sense. And he had done, you know, other... Like uh, John Woo <laughs> movies and stuff, right, right, and quite quite a few. Um, and the one thing that I noted was he was also worked on uh, Dracula two thousand that year. He did cinematography for I think three movies in nineteen ninety eight. Wow, but anyway, yeah. So there's that. So, do you have anything else before we say whether or not we recommend this? No, I think that's it. Yeah, I mean, John Ritter played a good villain, which a lot of nice people seem to do well. Which you don't see that often, too. Like, John Ritter you know, as a villain, or what? You never got to see that that often. Yeah. What, Jack Tripper and uh, Stay Tuned, even though that's got a very problematic actor in it. Um, well, but he, I mean, I mean, yeah, he was in other stuff, but, right. so, but he typically got, he got cat much more cast as the nice guy. So, yeah, I mean, and obviously I would recommend this. I mean, this was my choice, but you know, like I said, I think part of it is you have, it, it you have some good kills in this. So you have a nice horror balance with these, some, some good one liners. Um, and Jennifer Tilly, I mean, she's, she's, you know, she does a good, she's a good mix of comedic and dramatic skills. And I know, and I think sometimes people don't give her enough credit. Truly. I mean, what she, she nominated or win the Academy Award for Bullets Over Broadway. I think nominated. But which she was fantastic in that, which unfortunately was a Woody Allen movie. And that but that was, I will say, the last one I saw. Um but at least he wasn't in it. Uh <laughs> anyway, again, another conversation that I just don't want to get into. But Jennifer Tilly was fucking fantastic. Um, she's delivering these great one-liners and, she, and, you know, and works, you know, balances well with Brad Dourif and, you know, I, you know, it's just sure some things are very much like the, mu like we're saying the music or whatever, like very much that time, but it still is just like, doesn't feel so dated to me. And I, I think it's, it, yeah, I think it's a good mix of horror and comedy for people. And like I said, much queerer than you initially think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you pointed out some stuff that I never noticed. But I mean, like I and I'm sure there was there are more things. But those are just things that I was kind of like, I was looking there and I'm like, wait a minute. And then I was just like, okay, maybe it's because I've been watching too much ancient aliens and these can and these guys. You know, Giorgio and 
whatever some of the other ones that are kind of like, well, maybe if you take, if this, if we found this, then maybe this, and perhaps this, and then, you know, this, and then aliens. <laughs> it's not quite that, but, uh, you know, it's just, I'm making, there were just certain things to me that it was kind of like, no, you don't have to go these big leaps and bounds in this to try to have a queer interpretation. Those things are, you know, they're just not completely overt, but they're there. And they're just like Easter eggs. <laughs> Sounds like you would recommend it. I would. I would, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say, no, you should not watch that movie. Because even if you don't really like it, it's not that long. And if... I, yeah, I don't... <laughs> and, I, it, and I think there are enough horror fans that if they're on the fence about this, I, I would recommend they watch it anyway. Because I think they'd enjoy it enough. Like I said, there's some good kills in here. Yeah, cool kills. 90s <laughs> metal radio kind of soundtrack with Blondie and stuff thrown in there. Some nice goth um, and in clothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> all Yeah, all that. And Jennifer Tilly in... Leather or rubber or whatever it is she's wearing when she multiple walks. yeah latex <laughs> no so. she's not in latex she's she's in the vinyl yeah, yeah she was she's in multiple things Both she's in, in corset in she's yeah i mean that's fun for everybody it, yeah <laughs> there's something for everybody in the movie um and then 6 years later Oh, wait, we got to do our break. Yeah. Yeah. So, and as that ends up, dun, dun, dun. I mean, well, it, ha it has, it's been quite a while. So, I mean, we, we, we do do spoilers, obviously, on this show. But, of course, supposedly, Chucky and Tiffany have died. But... The seed of Chucky is coming. Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Perfectly right. laid groundwork. And on that note, we will take a break and come back with our next movie. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really. You can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon. And for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. And welcome back. Yes, now we are moving into much more over-the-top territory with Seed of Chucky. And much queerer and, yeah, more trans. Uh, yeah, definitely a, a, a much more out kind of narrative I feel and this like we were saying this this you know it got a lot of backlash from people um in the horror community and you know the more I think about it 
and the more, you know, it, I watch it, I'm like, that came out of homophobia and transphobia. Yeah. I would imagine so. Um, Without people overtly saying it. But, some, but, but granted, listening to what people were saying in their complaint. I mean, some basically. of them, some of them were kind of, you know, hinting on whatever and would make, you know, internet troll, whatever comments. But it, it just not quite, you know, but anyway, um, yeah, anyway, let's get into this seed of Chucky. From 2004. Um, this time, not just produced and, or is it produced or where? Well, not just written by Don Mancini, but also directed by, yes, his directorial debut, as you said earlier. Um, and starring, of course, uh, our, you know, Brad Dourif and Jennifer Tilly playing the dual role of Tiffany and Jennifer Tilly, <laughs> which I love that she like is so on board about. I'm g- and I'm going to get into this, the commentary that is going on here about Hollywood and how they treat women. Like, yeah, I the, just the walkie talkie comments about looking the catering truck and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And where it's like, oh, you have to stick on your diet. And she's oh. like, has to feels like, God, can't I just for once have a fucking Snickers bar and like not worry about it? Like having it, you know, and that's and part of what I have loved about Jennifer Tilly is that. She is a curvier, like, more human-looking, you know, actress. She's never been one to starve herself to fit this image. Right, she built the Jennifer Tilly image. Right, she's embraced it. And, and, yeah, I mean, that's, that's... I, it's not just that I enjoy, I enjoy her acting, but uh, you know, I, I that's one reason I you know I love her and this the way that was written in here, that critique of it and just that, well you know, always the competition of women, particularly of a certain age, vying for the same exact roles because they're not enough roles for women that age so oh oh no it goes to julia roberts oh no it goes to julia roberts <laughs> fuck julia roberts and truthfully i'm with her on that i don't think julia roberts is all that in a bag of chips i mean she's okay but i don't think she's as good as people i mean she's overrated i think so <laughs> yeah that, anyway is at war with julia roberts and katherine heigl or things I'm well, I don't no, I don't I don't like I don't dislike uh, Julia Roberts like I dislike Katherine Heigl. Because ha- Katherine Heigl, you know, her. She's a very limited actress with her abilities, for one. And with her acting, it all comes across as. She's just a complaining girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just everything sounds... She delivers all these lines and all these different characters, no matter how they're written, as if she's almost whining or complaining about something. Hmm. I don't don't see a lot of... And I, you know, and I know she was on Grey's Anatomy or whatever, and I haven't sought out so many movies in her career, but I just feel like, uh, from what I've seen, I have not been impressed. (laughs) Uh, I guess turning it a little bit away from... But anyway, to turn it away from that, 
I just, it, that's why, I mean, I, I, I just, that little, little common commentary on Hollywood that they add in here, you know, I, I just, I kind of love that. And kind of like they have the commentary in here with the paparazzi. Um, oh, you know, John Waters and, had to love okay. playing that character. And John Waters in here. Oh, you know, I always love John Waters. But this was written, spe- this character was written specifically for him. Because Don Mancini found out John Waters was a Chucky fan. And knowing how John Waters is such a true prime fan, and like, and it, it just, like, going to court trials and things like that, even. Right. Um, him playing a paparazzi, and, you know, and he is a, and he's a photographer, too, you know, uh, as an artist, but not just, I mean, he's a director, too, but it's, it, so it, it's just kind of, like, fits these certain things about him, but it's, like, gives him his opportunity where he's, you know, poking fun, too, of, you know, the... The the nasty, you know, depths of the paparazzi. Can you draw me a picture? Someone get her a pencil. Someone get, are you saying you're not an artist? <laughs> I mean, <What> like, <laughs> and I want, I just, I just hope he ad-libbed that entire scene. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I really kind of hope he did. How old are you? When were you born? Give us the exact day. What's your real age? <laughs> <laughs> What you realize, but I just love the thing. Can you get her a pencil? <laughs> yes. yeah, he is fucking great in this. But I mean, and he just, you know, and just all the, and of course the God bless the little people, you know, like. But all these, at these, the one liners like abound in this movie, but everybody delivers them so well. And then, of course, you got Red Ran representing the Woo, um. And making a Jesus bo- movie, making a G- well, making or a Mary movie. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Which. Him talking. It, yeah. The commentary on Hollywood later on when she says, oh, I'm pregnant. And he's like, why well, can't hire you? if you get pregnant and she's like but the virgin mary was pregnant it's like nope that i have a different visual fact, in mind yep that points to the fact of hollywood has a blind spot and that's totally how it would play out if that actually happened unfortunately if you were making a movie about the Virgin Mary and the birth of Jesus, whatever nativity type thing. And you found an actress who actually were pregnant or got pregnant, it, you know, and, and we're showing, are you kidding? They would either not hire her or she'd be fired. Like, they really, I mean, like, they really just, maybe they wouldn't fire her. They might push the bump down. Mm -hmm. I think the real Red Man would be way cooler about it than movie Red Man. Oh, I think so, too. I agree. (laughs) Mr. Red. At least I like to think so. (laughs) At least I like to think so. I fucking love how their their, uh, interactions in this movie. Oh, no, no doubt. But the scene, uh, so... If I had had, if I had planned more in advance, I mean, my, my week got, things have been a little crazier lately at work. So I didn't plan in advance. Otherwise I would have gotten a scene from this together for us to do. And as I was rewatching this movie, the one that I was just on the floor laughing about so much. And I was like, I would have loved to have done this with you, Darren. The Virgin Mary audition scene <laughs> in Red Man's office. I should have written that down because when you said that you were wanted to do a scene, I that was my first guess. But I was going to have you play 
the Jennifer Chili roll, and I was going to play that game. Of course. <laughs> I, but, <laughs> I was um, so confident earlier that just in case you threw a curve at me, I may or may not have tried to see if I could do um, a Jennifer Tilly impression. Okay. But I just love Jennifer Tilly because she is... It's like she's a good enough actress that she can act like a bad actress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, she's making fun of this image of what people think she is. And. Totally. She is so, she's, it's so much smarter than like, this movie is so much smarter than people give it credit for. I was watching it this time and I was really thinking about that. And I, I, there were so many little things and I'm like, oh yeah. (laughs) That people always talk to her about Bound. And... Yeah, and I it, and the, and it was just well, and again, I mean, of course, I just love that it. Just, she uses that as a, a way to manipulating, like, oh, well, I'll go call up Gina Gershon <laughs> with the teeth and bisexuality friends. for the straight man, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's it, it's really it's really kind of funny, and then the fact that later on, Tiffany, when she has subdued Jennifer Tilly, and she's faking being Jennifer Tilly on the phone, she's like, "Oh, I gotta go. I'm fingering Gina Gershon." <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you screaming? I'm not screaming. Oh, I'm watching Bound. <laughs> Uh, like she's just it's kind of like it's just kind of making fun of the fact that that's all these people can talk about and I mean yeah that's a good movie but that's not all that's good about that movie (laughs) right but it is uh, like mostly what I remember (laughs) Friday month and and we could talk about in a totally different context right um from a queer point of view but and not just the sex, but it's so funny that it's just, she's like playing with that. It's like, no, it just, yeah. People have hung up. Yeah. You're all stupid. You know? I almost thought that when Chucky was uh, getting his sample, mm-hmm. I almost thought that I, I wondered whether or not it would have been too much if he watched Bound. While he was doing it. But it crossed my mind. I yeah. did not really remember that happening. I remembered the joke of it being Fangoria. Because of fucking course it is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and I love, you know, and one thing I do love about. I'm not a big, in general, as far when it comes to horror movies. I'm not a big killer doll movie person. Nah. But. There's something about the Chucky movies that I really like. And I love the use of killer doll POV in this movie. Yes. Especially like near the beginning with Glenn, Glenda. Um, Oh, in their horror movie dream. Or before or no. after that. Oh yeah, in the I think so. In the horror movie Dream. Before and the then I think when they, show. Yeah. But there are other points too where it's used and you're just kind of like it, it's it's done very well and yeah, it doesn't Yeah. It doesn't feel forced. It just feels like, no, this is totally like (laughs) what it is. Like, it's just, this is where you would be. And this is your dangerous, like, because you see the knife there and whatever. It's got the sinister looking effects. So still works. And go after that little asshole Veruca Salt motherfucker. All right. (laughs) You're pissing your pants. But, you know, I wanted to point out. 
part of why I think this movie is so personal for Don Mancini. And it's not just because he has more creative control. The look at the 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 dialogue, the, the inner dialogue that you you that 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 Glenn Glenda has as part of the at the time of the like with the as the ventriloquist dummy, where it's like I don't know who I am, but I know I'm a freak. And the and, bookend of that at the end, too. Of the opposite. Right. Exactly. And and that is unfortunately what so many queer and trans youth are told. Well, and adults, too. But, you know, grow up hearing that, okay, you're going to hell because for being gay, it's a sin, whatever, like, you know, or trans people or, or, you know, demons or what, I mean, whatever nonsense it may be and whatever bigoted point of view it may be. And actually I just recently, um, and I highly recommend this, this documentary just came out, um, this month on, it's on Hulu called changing the game. And it's about high school trans athletes. And one of them, one of the athletes that they profile says, you know, I have it like I have to kind of speak out because there are so many people who just don't know or, you know, or in who, you know, think that trans people are freaks. Because they don't know and they don't understand. And, you know, it's and it's true that unfortunate that that is so much of a kind of narrative that some people put out and why you see so many queer and trans youth. Well, and again, and adults who are are suicidal who or who have attempted or who have succeeded in you know suicide but again this this also still goes back to that narrative of where which and you see it later with Chucky even where he's talking about like coming to peace in accepting and having pride in the fact that he's a killer doll and he enjoys it. <laughs> like it's a horrible thing, right? But like, you can't tell me who I am. I know who I am. You look at the basic dialogue that he's, that this, that that character speaks and you take it out of the context of this horror film, you wouldn't think it were a horror film. It, it, it's actually, it is very affirming for anyone who is outside of a mainstream narrative. And, you know, it, it's kind of, it, it's kind of funny. Like I said, that there was more there that I, I just, this time I was watching it and maybe it's because I, I've been reading, I, I, I just watched changing the game, you know, and, and with, and with the discussions of these and these in and, and that, which centered largely around these, um, four athletes at four trans a- high school athletes. And, to hear them speak about their experiences and to see what people say and how, you know, and treat them. And, you know, and of course it's the adults that are often worse than kids, you know, and what you see here too, 
where Glenn Glenda is like a sideshow freak, that is often for years a space where trans and gender nonconforming people where they were relegated. You know, it, I mean, come on, like the bearded lady that a woman who produces, you know, certain amounts of testosterone that causes hair growth. You know, I mean, like, right. And uh, <laughs> satirized in Big Top Pee Wee with the right. half man, half woman straight down the middle. Right. I mean, and, and well, and actually, not just that, if you, well, watch the, watch the documentary Disclosure, um, that's another one about trans imagery and media, um, and Hollywood, but some of the earliest cinema, and I just recently rewatched that too, but some of the earliest imagery in cinema was, featured cross-dressing. Whether it was for comedic effect, you know, or, you know, or it was just, okay, we are in a situation where, you know, sometimes like in Shakespeare, it was like, okay, the men will play the women's roles. And so there's dress and drag, you know, (laughs) you know, we just don't have enough women available. (laughs) Right. Guess you get to wear the dress today, you know. <laughs> but other, t- you know, there were certain times where it was, oh, we're making a joke out of this, like an insulting kind of joke. Um, and a lot, and there were one, there were some images, some early, uh, films, very early films, that included uh, dancers who were like split down the middle with man on one side and, you know, woman on the other. Yeah. Hi, Zora. (laughs) Yeah, we're getting all serious talking about uh, Seed of Chucky and Zora's here. You know, sorry, I I, kind of went on a... I, there, it, it, but I, I'm just saying that it's odd that when you start looking at this, it's like they're really actually. I mean, it is silly and ridiculous on one hand, but it has some good kills, and it is awfully bloody. You're right. I think this is bloodier than the previous one. I would say so, and sort of bigger i mean a lot of a lot of bride takes place in you know a trailer and a van right so this one has more moving parts there is the glenn glenda story there's the father son father daughter they do address you know because chucky's a fucking misogynist uh so of course it has to be a son yeah but Tiffany, but it's also Tiffany is trying to initially, at least, push Glenn Glenda into the female role. So I feel like you have the child who is intersex or two spirit, if you will, even to borrow the, I mean, the Native American concept even, because in a way, that makes sense for what happens later in the film. Yes. But, you know, I don't want to appropriate a term, but it's the way that Native American two-spirit individuals are the way they are considered and viewed in society. It is two genders. Well, it's male and female, you know, one in one body of sorts. And there are other 
cultures around the world that have similar uh, similar people and similar terms. But when you see, like I said, when you see later what happens with the twins and the so-called souls or the spirits are transferred from the dolls into the people and you have a physical set of twins and one is male and one is, one is gendered male and one is gendered female they split but i love that there is the discussion of pronouns in here um you know uh tiffany refers to you know as much as she's the parents, you know, as she's trying to push Glenn, Glenda, in, to be Glenda, like, you know, you have to be a daughter. You have to be a girl. Um, she, she comes around to this, you know, and she, she, um, oh, where, what was it that she said? Um. I'm thinking of one specific point of dialogue if you need me to talk while you're looking. Go ahead. When later on when Glenn Glenda says sometimes I feel like both can people be both and she yes. says well some people and then she gets cut off by Chucky. Yes. And the, yes and there is the discussion of being non-binary. And that was so far This was 2004. That discussion was not in the forefront, at really. So this really was kind of ahead of its time in a way. And as much as this is, you do unfortunately see that it brings up the psycho and dressed to kill kind of character, like the basically the killer type thing of ban and address kind of more because I almost feel like it moves into that caricature, that clunky caricature for a minute, you know, at one point, the, like around, when Glenn kinda, the climax of the movie. Glenn, yeah. When, uh, Glenn, Glenda, like, like has the psychotic break. As dressed like Tiffany. And or, dressed like yeah. Tiffany. Okay. I I feel like that's a little clunky, but I feel like it's then redeemed. Because then after that, like I said, you see No, pardon me, I have to cough. I gotta mute my mic. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> um okay sorry but like i said this is around this time tiffany starts using they pronouns at least more than once to describe glenn glenda yeah she gets on board with the nurturing she does and with the gender binary, uh, non gender non binary um, identity, um, and that's around the same time when Chucky is choosing to live his truth as a killer doll. Like, no, this is who I'm meant to be. This is who I truly am, and. You know what I mean? It's it's the same, like I was saying earlier, it's that same kind of conversation that queer and trans people have with themselves when they're coming to terms with it, you know, and before they come out 
It's, I mean, it's the same kind of thing, but if, if you took what Chucky says out of here, minus like a few words, <laughs> you know, it, it would translate perfectly outside of a horror movie. Yeah. I like who I am. <laughs> I feel more powerful with who I am than yeah. what somebody's trying to tell me to be. I never really thought that far into it before you started talking about. I mean, I, I knew that there were obviously some things, but you are finding layers. Well, like I said, it had been, I mean, it had been a while since I'd seen it and I hadn't, I, and I think maybe in part because of what I've, those documentaries I've recently been watching and I really, it really, I knew that when I picked this, that it, had definitely has some things that we could talk about and and I kind of brought it up with a little bit with Patrick from Scream Queens um you know just in talking it, and he's like actually you know he's like Seed of Chucky was mu you know more progressive than we realized and I'm like yeah, I know. And then when I watched it again, you know, that was before I watched it again. And then now I'm like, wow, there's even more there than, I mean, really. Because it it can speak to someone who is queer just as well as someone who is trans. But again, the speech comes from Chucky who is supposedly, who you know, cis white male. So for him to be the one speaking to the audience and to the mainstream, like, horror community, I don't know, maybe it's a way, I, I'm not saying you're going to change a million and one minds, but maybe, maybe it's a way to get through to some person who hadn't thought about you know, he pl explain just being queer and trans and, <laughs> you know, why we don't need heterosexual pride that way, you know, like. <laughs> it's sometimes you have to embrace like whatever and come and when you come to acceptance, like it's be proud of yourself. And but when you've been held back and people are telling you you're not. Although, I know there's some son of a bitch neo-Nazi who could distort that in, you know, their favor. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck They'd that. They'd find a way. They'd find a way. You know how they are. They like Nazis that way. Well, or some, you know, or someone chewing on Tucker Carlson or whoever. I don't know. He, he's pretty good at making up bullshit out of... Something good. Right. Purses lips like he's figuring out a hard problem. Some preacher who, you know, televangelist who's swindling money from all of his, you know, parishioners. His congregation. Yeah. His par parishioner, I guess, is only a Catholic thing. Um, uh, congregation. Excuse me. There we go. It's all good. We can steal some words but, from Catholics. Um, I used to be one. He so said, "Did you, right?" Well, that's yeah. That's why I. It's the first thing that pops up. Plus, plus also. Down south, I mean, well, Louisiana, you, they're called parishes, not counties. I mean, I grew up in Alabama, but I spent a lot of time in Louisiana, too. So. But anyway, so Seed of Chucky, what what do you say? Would you recommend this? Or yes. do you have anything else to say before you say that? Or No, uh, I mean, I think we've we were a little bit more excited to talk about Seed of Chucky. I wasn't sure which one I like more of the two, but that was not the question. So I don't have to answer that. I would definitely recommend Seed of Chucky to any Chucky fan. Um, 
if you don't like if you watched it one time and you're like, oh, fuck this, you might think differently. I know a lot of people. Well, yeah, it's kind of a human thing, like something that you've avoided for 15, 20 years or 15 years or so. You might yeah. take it a little differently. But I do want to ask you before you tell me if you would recommend it, if you could replace Julia Roberts in one movie with Jennifer Tilly, what would it be? Hmm. That's a good one. Or maybe you should think about that and post it in our group or something. But it came to mind when you were talking about Julia Roberts and Jennifer Tilly. Um, I think I think what I will do is I will post my answer and then everyone else can also post their answer too. There we go. Perfect. How about that? Um, that is a very good question to pose. Um, but yes, uh, of course I would recommend this. I know certain people just won't appreciate this, but there are people, (laughs) there are friends of mine that are even like Chucky fans who really weren't particularly into this when it came out. And I would, or, you know, and I would tell them, go back, go back, watch it with the eyes. Now it's, it's a different thing thing then you know there's a lot more going on there really is and it's you know it's not sure it's not pure horror but it has some great kills and you know is fun it it has some fantastic one-liners um you know being delivered by you know just, I don't know, everything work. I it works, but when you're talking about which one do I like better, Bride or Seed, um, that's a tough one. Because I would have said Bride. And then we talked about it. <laughs> and then we talked about and Seed. And then we talked about it. <laughs> but Bride might still win out a little bit. Because of the soundtrack. (laughs) It's a deciding factor. Like we said, put them together and they're shorter than a Lord of the Rings movie. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fun and you could get some people together. Even if you think, okay, we'll make fun of them. They're fun. They'd be fun to watch as a group. I mean, truthfully. Yeah, people are starting to get together with other people. Yeah. That's a good thing with a couple vaccinated friends. Get together, watch a movie. Definitely. Well, also, so, yeah. good picks. I didn't think they were bad, but these turned out better. I think I think we had uh, more to talk about than I necessarily expected when you announced it. Yeah. I I like I said, I I knew that there was there were things, but there were more things once I really started kind of looking. Not that I was like nitpicking because like I said, I could have probably found more, but there was more than I remembered or I just was suddenly making all the connections. Yeah. So Darren, tell us, What is up for our next episode? Okay, so for our next episode will be our second installment of looking at the Boys series. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. We got her for one more episode, everybody. At least. (laughs) No, full disclosure, I told you... I told you that, no, I have finished both seasons of the series of our, already, so I I got hooked. Um, yeah, but we will discuss more. So I have seen more, yes. And you might read some of the comic before that, too, right? Um, I think so, Maybe. actually. Maybe. I think Sorry. I want to read, I think I want to check out the comic as well, because um, I'm just curious to see... You know, which I prefer, you know. I could probably guess, but 
Mm-hmm. I don't want to influence your approach. It's going to be more scientific that way. Uh, I'm right. sure you've seen that Jensen Eccles, who is more popular with non-lesbian women, uh, is going to be in season three. I don't know if you know who Jensen Eccles is. Are you a no. Supernatural series fan? No. Ah, he is one of the Winchester brothers on the Supernatural series. The one that is not Jared Padlecki. Uh, he's playing... I've heard that I've heard that Jared Pedlecki name, but I have no idea probably even what he looks like. He was in the remake, uh, or he was in the Friday the Thirteenth standalone movie that came out in what two thousand nine or something like that. Oh, that thing! Ugh, yeah, I tried he, to get that. He was the guy with the sort of bowl cut looking for his sister. Uh, I think he was also in the House one of thing Wax, the remake, but I can't remember. I was going to say, the one thing that stands out about that Friday the 13th new whatever standalone kind of remake whatever, one thing that stood out to me was, okay, now we've moved away from the stereotype of, oh, it's the black guy. He gets killed off first. Now we've moved to the stoner Asian dude who gets killed off first. (laughs) And it was like the stoner in Freddy versus Jason who got, you know, that totally got killed. And yeah. So he is going to play. Anyway. Oh, sorry. But in <laughs> season ahead. three, he will play a character from the comic book that is kind of like, well, I don't know what the series is going to do. But yeah. in the comic book, the character is kind of like the boys version of Captain America. Okay. Soldier Boy. Um, he has not shown up in the series. Does he have his own dance? Um, I. <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry, <laughs> that's Soldier Boy. No. Uh, sure. But I know he did announce that his. That was a bad dad joke. <laughs> You're allowed one or two per episode. Uh, he did some sort of dance, I believe, in his video announcing that he had been cast for the show. Oh my god. But it uh I can't if remember. He did, if he did the soldier boy dance, I would have I doubt it. Laugh hysterically. <laughs> he does like to move, but if uh I don't he... I, I don't know why that it just be like, oh my god. Yes. Yeah. His his character on Supernatural is more into like Bon Jovi and stuff like that. Oh. Um but yeah, so anyway so yeah, that that will be the next the next episode. And I think yeah. Oh, well, of course, thank you for listening to the VD Clinic. Yes. Uh look for VD Clinic Pod <laughs> when you're looking for us. And as we say, uh leave out the pod if you need that other kind of information uh cuz we would right. just be googling for you if you get a hold of us about that shit. For the most part. But anyway, right. we shouldn't give medical advice. This no. is a show of satire. We are not, we, we are not practicing kind of medical practice. Yes. Uh, as you probably know. <laughs> I can give you a little first aid, but that's about it. Yeah. I know some like protest I, first I know aid. CPR. <laughs> but, and I know the Heimlich. We cannot write prescriptions. Nope. All that fun stuff. But VD Clinic Pod, thank you from Darren. And thank you from Vanessa, as always. And Zora would say thank you if Zora weren't just giving me the side eye right now. Do you know what saying, time it is? It's that don't bother me. Sit still. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still talking? <laughs> That's what the side eye is. Yep. And on that note, we will see you next episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the VD Clinic. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find us at Twitter at VD Clinic Pod or reach us via email at VD Clinic Pod at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook group, VD Clinic Podcast. We'd love to hear your feedback, suggestions, and more.